Lesson 22 today, we're going to multiply and divide fractions. I can almost hear you guys right now screaming and hollering. You're so excited. You know, to be honest with you, I don't understand the apprehension with multiplying and dividing fractions, why people always want to reach for a calculator. Um, for me, you know, doing, doing fractions on a piece of paper is easier than trying to figure out how to put it into a calculator. I, I'd rather use the calculator for decimals, to be quite honest. But maybe students, uh, they just want to use the calculator for everything. Well, we're going to get better at doing it without the calculator, okay? Let's not have that as a crutch. Here we go. Let's multiply one-fourth and one-half, and we're going to use an area model to illustrate the multiplication. Okay, so here's the area model. I'll just make a square here. I'm going to cut it in half and shade half of it. doesn't matter which half you shade. There's my half. Then I'm going to break up the other side into fourths, and I'm going to shade a fourth of it. Now you can see the one piece that's shaded both green and red. One piece shaded, so that's the one right there. And there's eight total pieces, hence the eight on the bottom. Okay, that means that one fourth times one half is one eighth. Okay, so we divided it in half, shaded half of it. Divided it into fourths, shaded a fourth of it. Doesn't matter which half you shade, doesn't matter which fourth you shade, you're going to end up with one out of eight pieces shaded twice. One half of the students in the class are boys. One third of the boys walk to school. Boys who walk to school are what fraction of the students in the class? Half of the students are boys one-third walk to school so and we want to know how many boys walk to school or what fraction of boys walk to school so one-third of one-half or one-half of one-third since multiplication is commutative it doesn't matter whether we do uh, one-half times one-third or one-third times one-half okay and we'll just do one times one is one and two times three is six just like on the previous one, 1 times 1 is 1, and 2 times 4 is 8. Okay, so 1 half times 1 third is 1 sixth. 1 sixth of the class are boys that walk to school. One out of every six students in the class is a boy that walks to school. All right, so some real-world applications and, and a model there to begin. Now let's just multiply these fractions. For multiplying, it's just top times top, bottom times bottom, numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. 1 times 3 is 3, and 2 times 4 is 8. 3 eighths, we are done. Okay. <clears throat> now you always want to leave your answer as a simplified fraction. 3 eighths is simplified. On D, what I'm going to propose to you, and this makes your life a whole lot easier, is simplify before you multiply. Five-sixths can't be simplified. Two-thirds can't be simplified. But you can also look at this diagonally. Do two and six have any common factors? Yeah. Two divided by two is one. And six divided by two is three. Then we'll go five times one is five. And three times three is nine. And there's our simple our answer. It's a simplified fraction already. As opposed to if we got 10 over 18, we would have to simplify that to 5 9 anyway. It's easier to do it first because you keep your numbers smaller. Write the multiplicative inverse, also known as the reciprocal, of the number. Okay. Multiplicative inverse and reciprocal are the same thing. The multiplicative inverse of 3 eighths is 8 thirds. Okay, and the reason 8 thirds is the multiplicative inverse of 3 eighths is because when you multiply 3 eighths by 8 thirds, you get 1. So whatever number you multiply a number by to get 1 is its multiplicative inverse. You flip it upside down. Okay, but that's not so easy here with 4. 
what do we multiply 4 by to get 1? Well, 4 times 1 fourth. See how the 4's cancel out? That'll leave you with 1. So the reciprocal of 4 is 1 fourth. Now, don't make the mistake when I ask you these questions on a test or a problem set or that to say that 3 eighths equals 8 thirds. Okay, that's, that, that's, first of all, that's not even a true statement. 3 eighths does not equal 8 thirds. What we're saying is 8 thirds is the multiplicative inverse of 3 eighths. 1 fourth is the multiplicative inverse or reciprocal of 4. Don't, don't use an equal sign in there. How many 2 thirds are in 1? That's a funny question. How many two-thirds are in one? Well, what they're really asking us to do here is divide one by two-thirds. One divided by two-thirds. Okay? That'll tell us how many two-thirds are in one. Just like if I said how many one-halves are in one, you divide by one by two. Okay? Well, when we're dividing by a fraction, what we really need to do is multiply by the reciprocal. And then the identity property of multiplication, we know that this is 3 halves, okay? Or 1 and a half if you prefer your mixed number. I'll, I'll take either one, personally. So 1 divided by 2 thirds is the same as 1 times 3 halves, which is 3 halves. Look at a similar question here. 1 divided by 3 fifths. Well, that's the same as 1 times its reciprocal, 5 thirds. It's 5 thirds. And 1 divided by 1 sixth, that's the same as 1 times its reciprocal, 6, which is 6. Okay, you're not doing anything with the first number. You're leaving it alone completely. Okay, uh, the second number, yeah, we need to find the reciprocal. Dividing is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. How many one-halves are in three-fourths? How many one-halves are in three-fourths? Well, what they're really asking us is, what is three-fourths divided by one-half? That'll tell us how many one-halves are in three-fourths. We'll set that up as multiplication. Okay. So instead of dividing by 1 half, we'll multiply by its reciprocal. The first fraction did not change. Just the second fraction. Okay, so instead of dividing by 1 half, we're going to multiply by its reciprocal, 2. Um, hey, let's simplify here first. 2 and 4 have a common factor. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 3 times 1 is 3. 2 times... 1 right there is 2. So 3 halves or 1 and a half. How many 1 halves are in 3 fourths? 1 and a half 1 halves are in 3 fourths. And just a couple more division problems. 2 thirds divided by 3 fourths. That's like 2 thirds times 4 thirds. Now what a lot of people make the mistake of doing is they just cancel out these 3's and maybe they simplify this 2 fourths. Nope you got to change it to multiplication first, and then there is nothing to simplify. You just go 2 times 4 is 8, and 3 times 3 is 9, and you're done. On the second one, where we flip these two fractions around, instead of 2 thirds divided by 3 fourths, we're doing 3 fourths divided by 2 thirds. Again, instead of dividing by 2 thirds, let's multiply by the reciprocal. Then identify if we can simplify anything. I don't see anything that can be simplified. So we'll do 3 times 3 is 9, and 4 times 2 is 8. Notice the answers are reciprocals. They are not equal. Okay, Since they're not equal, we know that division is, we already knew this actually, division is not commutative. It does, add or, does matter what order you multiply or divide in. Um, you can present this as a mixed number too. Okay, so 2 thirds divided by 3 fourths is not the same as 3 fourths divided by 2 thirds, but notice how the answers end up being reciprocals of each other. Okay, that's it for today. Um, I think I covered a lot in a relatively short span of time here. You know, hopefully you were pressing pause when you needed uh, more time to write things down. If I was talking too fast, which I kind of sense I was today. Uh, hopefully you're rewinding it and, and playing it a second time. And that's one of the benefits of these videos for you guys.
And if you got it one time through, you don't have to listen to it a second time. And again, that's a benefit for you as well. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. Adios.